So the other day was February 2nd, and uh, I was leaving the store, and I saw this kid, like, crying on the sidewalk. And I'm like, hey, man, what's, what's, what's wrong? Are you okay? And he said, well, today is the second month of the year, the second day of the second month, and it's 2022, and today is my 22nd birthday. I'm like, wow, that sounds great. That's a big day for you. Why, why are you crying? What's, what's wrong? He said, so I went to the track, and... I put all my money that I have, $2,222.22 on the second race, the second horse at 2.22 p.m. And I was like, wow, that, that sounds like good luck. So why are you crying? He said he came in second. Hey kids, Adam here. Today's video, we're gonna look at a new set of absolutely free plugins from uh, Toucan Studios written by John Matthews. Uh, these are a number of plugins that uh, emulate analog gear. They are all JS plugins, they're all free. They're all within the uh, Repack repositories. Now, to get started, the first thing you wanna do is look at this card up here, go over to my good friend Mike from Let's Talk About Reaper's channel and look at his video on how to install these. Uh, I won't go over that here because I'll throw him a bone and get some people over to his channel even though he's you know out subscribing me by 4,000 to 500 or whatever it is, but uh, we won't hold that against him. He has some really good info over there on how to install it. Uh, you also wanna make sure you update it, I'll show you that in a second. These uh, plugins were written by John Matthews. I don't know too much about him other than he just kind of blew up the whole Reaper scene about, you know, a few months ago with these plugins. There is an 1176, there's an LA-2A, there's a analog summing plugin, there are some EQs and compressors, some reverbs, some delays. There's basically a whole suite of plugins you could use to do a mix. Let's head over to Reaper and uh, we can take a look and compare these to some of the other plugins that I've used in previous videos. All right, here we are in Reaper. Now, one of, the, one of the things that I mentioned, I wasn't gonna show how to install these. Once you have these installed, and please check out Mike's video, uh, what you wanna do is you wanna go to Actions, Repack, and do Synchronize Packages. You won't do anything here because I have them updated, but there was an update. If you already have these installed, there was an update last week that fixes some things. So let's take a look. First, uh, we'll just take an open slot here um, and type Toucan. There are a number of plugins. There is the Disk Treasure plugin, which Mike talked about in his video. I will not be going over that one today. I'll be going over some that I use in my normal mixes and we'll kind of compare to what these sound like. Um, so for starters, let's, uh, let's take a look at the Master Fader. And uh, the first plugin I use is the Rare SE by Analog Obsessions. In fact, uh, let me back you up a step. There's a card up here for uh, my Waves, I'm Gonna Leave You uh, video. And this is the song, and these are the plugins that I use. Uh, in that video, I went from Waves to T-Rex to Analog Obsession. I'm going to use the Analog Obsession plugins moving forward, maybe in conjunction with some of these Toucan plugins since they, they, they work really well. So that said, uh, let's bring up the um, Pultec. This is the uh, EQP1A Elemental P SOLWTF EQ plugin. And now uh, we'll expand this out so it's in its own window. And as you can see, it looks like a Pultec. There's this cool little toucan uh, thing on a treble clef here uh, with the toucan beak. And um, it has the normal, you know, normal UI for a Pultec plugin. Now they do not reset. I would like to see that as a future add-on. For now, they may be kind of small. I'll make sure I zoom in on the video like I always do. Uh, but let's compare these to the analog obsession. So I want to get these settings the same. Uh, let's do the boost up at about two, the attenuation the same, the, the for the bass, and then the frequency is at 30. We'll do the boost up at uh, a little over 6, the uh, bandwidth all the way to sharp, the high frequency all the way to 12, and then the attenuation selector to 5, even though we're not using this attenuation knob. And then the output uh, is just uh, at 5 or even. Uh, let me do the trick where we go back and forth. If you click on one plugin, hold on control, click on the other, hit control B, it'll go back and forth. Let me just play a chorus in this song and we'll go back and forth. Starting with the analog obsession, I'll put something on the screen to show which sounds, you know, which is playing. So 
So the first thing you'll notice is the mids are much more scooped on the toucan version of this. And now what I found is that the um, both the waves, the T-Rex and the analog obsession uh, pull text were very close. So I don't know if all three of those were wrong because I know there are some uh, plugins that haven't really emulated the physical hardware as well as they should have. I don't know if Toucans is wrong, those three are right. I'm, I'm gonna kind of lead towards the Toucan being a little bit off here. Uh, let's play around with it and see if I can get it to sound a little bit closer to what the, uh, what the Rare SE by Analog Obsession sounds like. Closer, but really not where uh, the other plugins were at. So for this one, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to stick with the analog obsessions. Um, but I think there, if you start a mix from scratch, you can get some decent sounds out of that. Let's move on. We'll um, go on to another plugin and we'll take a, a look at something different, something maybe a little bit better um, as far as sounding like some of the uh, industry standards here. So let's look at bass and let's look at the 1176. It's one of my favorite uh, compressors for bass specifically. I'll go into a clean bass part here. Let's solo this out. And I'm using the Fetish by Analog Obsession. I've also used the T-Rex and I showed you that. The Fetish more models the blue uh, 1176, where the black is the uh, was the T-Rex version. The Waves has both, uh, and the Toucan version is the NC76 here. And this obviously is modeling the black version, but we'll see what we can do with it. Let's see if we can get it to sound a little bit more like the um, the Fetish here. So I'm just going to kind of dial in some of these settings to be the same. Attack is going to be straight up and down. Now the attack in the Toucan works like the actual physical hardware, where in the Fetish, it's the opposite. The Fetish is more where we would think it would be, like the higher you go down the, uh, you know, as you as you increase the um, slider or the knob here, you get more, whereas in the original piece of hardware, when you increase it, it actually makes it faster. Um, so I think this setting is about right. I want a ratio of four to one, and then we'll just dial in the input gain to match the uh, compression levels here. So here we go. Sounds pretty close. Let me do my trick where I double stack these compressors. So just uh, control C, control V to get two copies on. And what I wanna do is make sure that the volume output matches. I also wanna make sure I'm still getting that three to five-ish uh, dB of compression here. That's pretty good. Now let's compare this to the uh, Fetish. Now, if you click on the first plugin, hold on control all the way up, it'll do all four. And then when you hit control B, it'll go back and forth between the two that are selected. So this is very useful to do multiple plugins. You can also do the same with two and one as we'll show you a little bit later.
I don't notice any different in sound here. I think everything's glued well together. Uh, I think the uh, winner goes to both. These. Uh, this is a tie. And I didn't really want to do a score thing, but I guess here we are and we're doing a score thing. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Um, there is a gate. I want to show you this on the snare drum. I thought this is pretty interesting. Um, what I'm using right now on the snare is the uh, Debleeder by Wilkinson Audio. And here's what the snare sounds like with the Debleeder on. I'll turn it off. And you hear just, you hear the whole rest of the kit, you hear a lot of hi-hat, and uh, it just comes through really kind of annoyingly. So let's add the gate on here. This is called EXP Gate 2. And we'll do the same thing. We're kind of bump it up here. And I'm going to just uh, put it up to the top of this thing here. I'm just going to play it with the default settings and don't touch anything here. And then back and forth. I think as a gate, that works great. The Debleeder allows a little bit more of that tail to come through, and it's not really just uh, reverb because you're, you all the effects are the same except for the gate here. It is allowing a little bit more of that natural snare transient, the psh to come through. And the Toucan version doesn't do that as much, but I don't see any reason why I wouldn't be able to use this. I also left the defaults. I kind of messed with the attack just a little, but I could see myself playing around with this and getting a, a setting that will work really well. Uh, let's go on to the next plugin, see what we have on the list here. So the next one I wanna look at is the Exciter slash Sub Bass. Now I do have this channel called Drums Exciter where I was using the Aphex Vintage Exciter in uh, Waves. I've moved over to this Lufticus with this uh, high boost band at 5K along with some EQ of like a top and bottom kind of thing. All this is really meant to do is kind of uh, add harmonic frequencies to the drums. It doesn't really do the same as like the, uh, an oral exciter would do, but it's close. So here's just this track. And I have like the drums, I think I have the snare, the toms, and the overheads uh, going through this just to bring out some more. Let's add on this uh, exciter plus sub. And it's the Toucan Exciter with Fat Bottom. Because I don't want the, uh, I don't want to do anything with the bottom end, I'm going to bypass this. And let's kind of mess with the frequency in the top end and the mix and see what it sounds like. What I'm going to try here is I'm going to try to use the same re-EQ and just go, just go with the Lufticus back and forth. I think both of those are very close. I think either one would work. Uh, let's go on to the next. I think uh, I haven't been keeping score with the other ones, but I think uh, the Toucan Exciter will work just as well uh, as a Harmonic Exciter. Next, let's look at the LA-2A. I use this on guitars almost exclusively. I also use it on keyboards, but let's look at some both clean and heavy guitars here. And... Uh, in the chorus here, there's a clean in the in the I guess the we have a light chorus and a heavy chorus in this song. There's like a clean guitar, sounds like this. And if we go into the two can plugins, this is called the LA1A. And what I'll do, like I've done with everything, is I'll play this, get the levels and things matched up, and uh, we'll see what it sounds like. I'm gonna stop right here. One thing I've noticed with this plugin, there seems to be some sort of a bug or delay or something in it where 
when you first set the peak reduction, it doesn't really work. And then you set the gain and the peak reduction flies all the way over. And then you set the gain back down and then everything seems to work. So I've noticed this the last couple of times I've been playing with it. After that, after you get that first initial thing, uh, it seems to work. I'm going to shoot uh, John Matthews a message here and, and just see if he notices that or if maybe that's the way the actual physical hardware works or the one that he modeled works. So uh, let's continue here. And then we can compare them back and forth, starting with the analog obsession. They sound very similar. They both sound exactly like I would expect an LA-2A compressor to sound like. So let's go on to the heavy guitar here in the heavier chorus, and we'll add in the LA-1A again. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this the same thing I did with the clean. I'll get this set up, and then we'll go back and forth. And now we'll do a song comparison back and forth. I didn't hear any differences going back and forth between these two, so uh, Toucan plug-in, definitely a winner, but since we're keeping score, or I think we forgot to start keeping score, so we'll go with a tie. Next plugin, please. Next plugin we're gonna look at is called Tape Machine, and uh, we're gonna look at it on the master bus first. So in my previous video, I for it didn't really have an analog obsess obsession plugin for my Waves Kramer tape. So I went with the T-Rex Tape Machine 440. I really like this plugin. It sounds very good. It gets a, a good clean sound. I can dirty it up if I want. And I just, I just like the way this thing sounds. So that said, let's go and bring in the Toucan plugin, which is called Tape Recorder. And uh, it looks like a tape recorder, like the last chorus in the song and play. I'm going to leave it at the default settings. We'll go back and forth and then we'll kind of tweak things and see how it sounds. You'll notice it sounds muffled. Now I know that a lot of the, uh, the tape uh, machines, they round off the waveform. So it can take some of those peaks out of there. Uh, let's see if I can play with some of the settings here to get it to sound a little bit more like I would expect it or like I'd want it to sound like. The Toucan tape machine tape recorder sounds good. It just doesn't sound like what I want it to sound like. Now, granted, you could get a hundred different tape plugins and they're all gonna sound different. So it's kind of hard to compare these back to back. Uh, so for me on the master bus, it isn't something I would use it, but let's, let's try something else. Let's try this on bass and see what it sounds like here. I'm gonna go to the same, uh, same section of the song. I'm gonna do my octave uh, bass, which sounds like this.
and let's get this uh, kind of dial it in and see w w uh, what it sounds like. I'm using the Hornet tape plugin, which is much more subtle than the uh, T-Rex one, but I thought it sounded pretty good on bass. I'm also using JS saturation to kind of get uh, a little bit, a little bit more um, saturation out of it. But let's see what the uh, Toucan one sounds like and see if I can get this to maybe sound better in the mix. I think that sounds much better because there are no high frequencies in the bass that are being cut off and being chopped off. Let's see what it sounds like in the mix. I think that sounds great in the mix. I think the tape recorder, probably not a thing to use for a more wide spectrum um, sound like a full mix, but I would think on bass, on drums, maybe even on a distorted guitar, you could get maybe some of the harshness out by using this. I may use it on my room mic. Uh, in fact, I'll put a card for uh, how to get uh, like really huge drums using a room mic. I may use this in that and um, in the future and see what that sounds like. So we have one more plugin to look at. It's, we're gonna go back to the uh, mix bus here, the master fader. In my uh, previous videos, I talked about this GW mix centric and how I really need it because it does things that I can't kind of emulate with anything else. There may just possibly be something that we can use here. Uh, Toucan has a preamp plugin, and it looks pretty straightforward. It is a input and output. There's two modes, uh, preamp and distortion, similar to what I would imagine like a 1073. In fact, this may be modeled after a 1073, and there also is a low and high frequency it's not gonna sound the same, but let's kind of play back and forth and see what we can get out of this. That is very, very, very close. Now there are, in this GW mix centric, there are a number of saturation compression things going on, but purely sonically wise to my ears, this preamp plugin is very close. I would say uh, definitely put this on your mixes and maybe, maybe actually if I messed around with putting this in the chain somewhere else, it would sound differently. Usually what uh, the GW Eccentric they recommend is put at the end of your mix and that's where it's most effective because you don't wanna really mix into it with other plugins. You wanna have it at the end of your chain, but maybe, just maybe I could get around doing this and be completely 100% waves free uh, with this preamp plugin. So that is it for the Toucan plugins. That I, There are a number of others. There's a delay, there's a reverb. I didn't want to get into those because I know this video is going to be long enough as it is. But these Toucan plugins are, are great. I highly recommend them. Um, I'll put a link in the description to where you can get them from. And uh, you already saw the links to how to download them, how to install them in Reaper, and uh, how to use them. My only complaints, the VU meter doesn't seem to work. 
It's called MPC meter. I don't know if it's me or what, but I put it on the master channel and engage it and the needle doesn't move at all. The, uh, it would be nice to have the knobs be, uh, when you hold on control in Reaper, it's a, it's a slower moving like knob or fader. It'd be nice if those knobs did the same thing because some of them are really sensitive and it's really kind of hard to gauge in. Now I have a clutch on my mouse I can use to lower the speed. Uh, so that's not really an issue for me, but I know it would be an issue for some people. And then resizing them. Those are the three things that I would really like to be able to see, you know, be able to resize these and have them just be a, instead of a static image, have them be able to be resized. So that's it. Let me know what you think. Have you used the Toucan plugins? Are you going to use them now you've seen this video? Uh, have you seen other people talk about them? What's your favorite Toucan plugin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, let me know in the comments. Until then, uh, leave me a like, leave me a subscribe, hit the little bell thing so I can notify you. Don't forget to check out the unofficial Reaper users group Discord. Link is in the description. And until next time, have yourselves an amazing week. I got a new space heater. It's super quiet and it doesn't really annoy me like the other one does. In case you're wondering, the cost of a heater to heat all of space, $69.99 on Amazon. What the hell did I just do? What the hell did that just do? I thought that sounded as close to the Kramer Master. Is this thing going to die on me? What is what does three minutes remaining mean in the battery when I have it plugged into a power source and no actual battery? I wonder if he gets dizzy flying around that tape machine like that.